It's the Wilk Report. I'm Michael Wilk, coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio. The frustrations never end. They don't. I I'm sorry, but... Yeah, so, uh, IGN.com reporting on how <laughs> George R. Abrams had to go whining to George Lucas to help him fill it, finish the trilogy he started and then abandoned because he has absolutely no care whatsoever for Star Wars any more than he has any care for Star Trek. Seriously, this boy over only ever knows how to start bad reboots of popular uh, movies and TV shows and then go off to do something else because he gets bored easily and doesn't even give a shit about what happens afterward. I don't know how much money they paid him to come back and try and fix the mess that Ruin Johnson made for him, but it just kind of goes to show you what a no-talent hack Abrams is, that he can't even get his shit together. So let's go ahead and get to the news article here. IGN.com, How George Lucas Helped Finish Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. By Joshua Yell. The new teaser trailer for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker features quite the surprise. As the trailer comes to a close, the screen cuts to black and our ears are filled with the cackling of Emperor Palpatine. It's a laugh cold enough to send shivers down your spine and a character inclusion crazy enough to make your head spin. Alright, uh, before I finish the rest of the paragraph, let me reread that last sentence uh, so that it's accurate. It's a laugh cynical enough to cause nausea in your gut and a character inclusion lazy enough to make your head spin. Be lazy because there's no narrative reason. George Lucas killed Palpatine off at the end of Return of the Jedi. I mean, yeah, you, you can say that the comics and the novelizations that came afterward resurrected him in a clone body, but those are not considered canon anymore. So how are you going to believably bring back Palpatine? The Sith Lords, it's been established, cannot come back as Force ghosts. They cannot achieve immortality that way. I mean, you can't even adequately explain how Luke Skywalker is supposed to be alive and well, even though Ruin Johnson pretty clearly killed him off at the end of The Last Jedi. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm, i yeah, so let me just get through the rest of this paragraph before I, I move on to my own thoughts on this. So, uh, Palpatine met his electrifying end in Return of the Jedi, after all. IGN talked to director and co-writer Jar Jar Abrams at Star Wars Celebration Chicago about how the iconic villain came to be a part of the film, and his answer included a meeting with the maker himself, George Lucas. This movie had a very, very specific challenge, which was to take eight films and give an ending to three trilogies, and so we had to look at, you know, what is a bigger story? We had conversations amongst ourselves. We met with George Lucas before writing the script, Abrams revealed. These were things that were in real, not debate, but looking at the vastness of the story and trying to figure out what is the way to conclude this? But it has to work on its own as a movie. It has to be its own thing. It has to be surprising and funny, and you have to understand it. And then, of course, uh, they encourage you to watch the video above in order to find out what the hell is going on. Uh, months ago, it was rumored that Lucas was being consulted for Episode Nine to help make it a satisfying conclusion to the saga that he started, so now Abrams has confirmed that involvement. Abrams didn't specifically cite Lucas as a person who came up with the idea to put Palpatine in The Rise of Skywalker, but given that Abrams brought up Lucas while discussing The Fallen Emperor, it may well have been him. So, oh, Alright, so this isn't actually even confirmed. It's more implied and they're taking Abrams' statements to mean that maybe Lucas might have suggested it. Well, if this is true, if Lucas did indeed suggest adding Palpatine 
to The Rise of Skywalker. I'm pretty sure he did it just to fuck with Abrams for messing up his trilogy. Because Abrams, all he did with The Force Awakens was rehash A New Hope. Ruin Johnson, basically, because he was so impatient to get to his own trilogy, decided he was going to end the present trilogy early by making it a duology. So, yeah, making it open and possible to satisfyingly wrap up the present trilogy. And so Abrams, who didn't even have a script written up, I mean, supposedly, uh, you know, it, it's been suggested by Daisy Ridley and others that uh, Jar Jar Abrams did, in fact, have a plan in place for the next director to pick up and continue the trilogy. But you left that plan in the hands of someone who has so little regard for Star Wars that he just tossed it in the trash because he wanted to be edgy and chic and uh, subvert expectations. Yeah, no bullshit. You just wanted to destroy something so you could go off and make your own Game of Thrones in space. Well, guess what, Ruin? The actual Game of Thrones guys have been slated to direct the next trilogy. Yours, if it even happens at all, won't be happening for a while yet. So, sucks to be you. Alright, so let's uh, continue on here. In the original trilogy, Lucas presented Paul Patina as the powerful boss who commanded Darth Vader while lurking in the shadows before trying to lure Luke Skywalker to the dark side in a plan that literally blew up in his face. Lucas then used the prequel trilogy to show the Sith Lord's origin, including his rise to power and transformation into the lightning-blasting despot. With Palpatine being a major figure in nearly all of Lucas's Star Wars films, it makes sense why it would be appropriate to include him in the final chapter of the whole saga. Well, no, it doesn't make any sense. And it's not appropriate because he was already killed off. You, Lucas told the story he wanted in the original Star Wars trilogy. He killed off Palpatine, killed off Vader, you know, redeemed him uh, back into Anakin Skywalker. And that was it. All right? And that was the ending of the that saga, was with Return of the Jedi. And what Kathleen Kennedy did, uh, because Disney mandated it, was... She decided to crap all over uh, Lucas's original trilogy by saying, oh, no, we're going to undo the ending because I didn't like it. The Emperor never should have been killed off, so we're going to bring him back. Darth Vader should have never have been killed off, but we can't figure out a believable way to do it, so we'll have his grandson, Emo Vader, who does nothing but throw whiny temper tantrums and destroy things whenever he can't have his way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so uh, let's continue on with here. IGN also talked to Oscar Isaac about taking up a leadership role in the Resistance now that, as he says, Leia is gone. Well, there really is no Resistance anymore. Don't you remember in The Last Jedi it got pretty much wiped out? You made Akbar die like a bitch getting sucked off into space, or blown out into space, I'm sorry, uh, that would be the more accurate term. Uh, yeah, I mean, in fact, the, in fact, they're even that they built scenes around Carrie Fisher's unused footage from The Force Awakens, and presumably from The Last Jedi. I don't know if they have anything left actually, um, but it also suggests that the Skywalker saga does not pick up immediately after The Last Jedi which is probably about the only decent thing you could say about it, is that uh, they don't try and do that stupid, oh, you know, picks up right where the previous movie left off. Because that is just... Uh, I, I, uh, I'm sorry, if, if I seem a little ticked off uh, with these last two videos, it's because, you know, two of my favorite... Uh, pop culture franchises have been run into the ground by people who despise them and want it to make a shallow, one-dimensional, 
overproduced, uh, pointless exercise in fan fiction put on the big screen. And it sucks. And on top of that, you know, we're, we're having injury added to insult by being told that we're racists and sexists for not liking it, even though we like other shows and films that do have strong female leads, like uh, Alita Battle Angel, like The Orville, where, I mean, hell, I mean, if you've listened to my review about uh, Sanctuary, you know, season two, episode 12 of The Orville, I mean, that, that episode really belongs to the ladies. You know, they're the ones who are kicking butt in that episode. It's badass. It's well-written. You identify with the characters in there. And it's just... And you can sympathize with them and you want them to come out on top. You don't want the guys to win. Because they're being assholes. They're, they're acting like... Uh, the real world equivalent, uh, like the, the science fiction equivalent of the uh, the Saudi regime, which oppresses its women. So, yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah, so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have the IGN article linked to below, but, uh, you know, th this is just, you know, more proof in my mind that Jar Jar Abrams has no idea what the hell he's doing. I mean, he, he was never the right choice to direct Star Wars. He was certainly never the right choice to resurrect Star Trek. And, you know, once he did his little fanfic fan service, he went off to go start his next project and left the trilogy in the hands of someone who doesn't really give a shit about it. Because Jar Jar Abrams never gave a shit about Star Wars. Just like he never gave a shit about Star Trek. In fact, he hated Star Trek. Thought it was too cerebral for him. So he had to dumb it down to his level. And now he's dumbed Star Wars down to his level. So, you know, to me, you know, th this is just one more sign. And plus, apparently, Kathleen Kennedy is going to be plaguing us for another decade. Because they can't seem to find anyone at Disney to take over. Lucasfilm from that idiot because no one else wants the job of having to try and resurrect this. Well, I sincerely hope that episode nine fails so spectacularly that people realize that Jar Jar Abrams is and always was a fraud who can't direct his way out of a paper bag. I sincerely hope episode nine fails so badly that Kathleen Kennedy is removed because these assholes have destroyed any chance of getting a decent Star Wars movie for at least a generation. They ruined the one chance. There was only one chance to have the big three from the original trilogy, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, and Harrison Ford, up on the big screen, reunited for one final outing, and they blew it. Harrison Ford was the only one who got what he wanted out of The Force Awakens. He got Han Solo killed off so he would never have to come back and play the role again. And now you've got Carrie Fisher, who died in real life, so there's no more chance of having a proper reunion with Luke because in The Last Jedi, she she's reduced to Mary Poppins in space before being taken out of much of the rest of the movie. And then, you know, the, her supposed reunion with her brother turns out to have been a fraud. And even then, you know, you've got C-3PO and R2-D2 supposedly there with them, and he doesn't even look at them. He doesn't acknowledge them. Those droids were there with him from the beginning. They were the ones who got him started on the path to becoming a Jedi. Because fate happened to drop them right in his lap. And he doesn't even look at them. Just like when Han was killed off and Rey and Finn and Chewbacca return from, from the Starkiller base. It's not Chewbacca, Han's friend of 40 years or more. She goes to hug 
and seek solace in because he was his her husband's friend. No, it's some stranger she never met. You've got the middle trilogy saying, and it's actually, you know, it was implied that Ray was either connected to the Skywalker or Solo family. You know, maybe she was a student of Luke's or possibly Luke's daughter or maybe even Han and Leia's daughter and Kylo's sister. We don't know because Ruin Johnson decided, oh, I'm not going to follow Abram's plan. I'm going to do my own thing. She's nobody. It's not important. My trilogy comes first and foremost. So I'm just going to wrap up this trilogy early. I mean, what the fuck is going on? Pardon my French, but what the fuck is going on at Disney? Why is Bob Iger keeping Kathleen Kennedy around? Because the utter morons she has directing the Star Wars movies, trying to churn them out like on a factory conveyor belt, badly written, badly acted, overproduced visuals, like so, cl visuals that are so cluttered, you don't have time to process anything. Pointless fan service like Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber being inserted in The Force Awakens for no narrative reason that makes any sense. Just to, to throw it to the fans. Well, yeah, that might be a nice little bone to throw at us, but there's no explanation behind it. How does it get there? Doesn't matter. Your asshole's for even speculating. That's a message that Abrams and Johnson sent to us. And now, because... And really, a lot of... The, Abrams actually bears a lot more fault for the state of Star Wars than Ruin Johnson does, because Ruin Johnson is just an egotistical little child who was brought in didn't really give a shit about anything, just wanted to do his own thing. But Abrams was the one who pitched to Kathleen Kennedy the idea to resurrect Star Wars uh, in its present form with grand stories of this big epic saga that would wrap up the Skywalker legacy and give fans a closure that they wanted before moving on to the next trilogy. And he showed so little regard for it that he just abandoned it after he was done with The Force Awakens. He didn't give a shit. He didn't care that Ruin Johnson or whoever else directed would direct a good or bad movie. He just assumed that uh, Kennedy would make some rational decisions. Well, you know, it's pretty clear by now that Kathleen Kennedy, you know, when she was working under George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, that she was probably little more than a glorified gopher. She made sure the money was doled out, but that was pretty much it. That's all a producer is. Because guess what? George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, they're alters. They're not perfect. You know, there's a lot of things wrong with their movies that, uh, you know, depending on what point in their careers those movies were made, because they sold out, but they're still alters. And they were the ones who had the vision and did the actual directing and put everything together. I mean, if you look at the behind the scenes stuff for the Phantom Menace, you know, back when it came out 20 years ago this year, uh, you know, they, they showed this one scene where the uh, special effects crew and everyone was like looking at all these storyboards that uh, George Lucas had all these, these huge like wall sized storyboards that are loaded with images. And you, you just, I mean, everything planned out to the smallest detail. I mean, say what you want about his storytelling. George Lucas is probably one of the most competent and attentive directors you will ever meet, if you ever have the privilege of meeting him. I mean, you know, for all my criticisms of his storytelling and 
you know, I will go into that. I, I'm planning a, an analysis of the original trilogy and the prequels that uh, I'm going to be working on. It's going to take up a lot of my time. Uh, still got to work on that Shazam review uh, probably tonight or tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, that, that, this is... You know, th th this is the kind of shit that is going on. It's a con game that relied on Abram's goddamn magic mystery box, and it's completely stupid. It's a con game, okay? Because the magic mystery box is full of the cheap shit that the magic store couldn't give away. And so they tossed it all into a box, unmarked, and peddled it as you know, having 50 bucks worth of magic items. And you swallow it because you don't know any better. So when you get it home, you open it up and find out it's nothing but junk inside. Worthless. So you toss it. You're out money. No refunds. And then the magic store goes on to fool other people. So yeah, that's Jar Jar Abrams. He's the one who started this, you know, with Kathleen Kennedy's blessing. I mean, she's ultimately she's the the one most responsible, but Jar Jar Abrams was trusted to craft this whole thing and he abandoned it. George Lucas, you know, say what you will about his trilogies, you know, he stuck with them from beginning to end. Even when he had other directors, he was still producing and active behind the scenes, making sure that everything was following his vision. Abrams didn't give a shit. And now he's been brought back in to try and clean up the mess that he and Ruin Johnson made, and he's so incapable of doing it, he had to go whining to George Lucas, saying, Help, I need you to help me finish my trilogy. Because it's been so fucked up. Should have just had George Lucas produce all three movies. And co-write, or at least co-write the screenplays. Because his screenwriting skills, I mean, the, the, especially his dialogue, they leave a lot to be desired. But at least it would have had something where, you know, Lucas at least had a hand in making these movies watchable. But essentially, he decided, oh, I don't need him. So, yeah, that's the state of Star Wars. I mean, I mean, I honestly don't even have any interest anymore in going to see Episode 9. Episode 8 killed it for me. And I suspect that it's going to be the same for a lot of Star Wars fans. No one is going to want to go see this movie in any appreciable numbers because the last two burned them so much, I, I think... That uh, you know they're just going to stay away, and I and I sincerely hope that this thing loses money. I don't want any more Star Wars movies made, as long as Kathleen Kennedy and her merry band of fuck ups are at the helm. I don't. I would rather not have a Star Wars movie than have bad Star Wars. And I would rather have no Star Trek series on the air than have such a a putrid pile of excrement that CBS is selling behind its paywall. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree, disagree? Are you looking forward to this movie? Are you dreading it? I want to hear from you. If you like what you've heard and you want to hear more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload new content. If you want to help support the channel, keep the lights on, help us bring you more content, head over to our Patreon or subscribe to our page. Become a donor. We can't do this without you. Until next time, this is Michael Wilk for The Wilk Report saying take care. Good night. I'm out.